everybody, it's Colette Baron reed and it's time again for my weekly forecast of the universal energies that are affecting all of us this week, the week of the blood moon, which starts actually this morning at 1 a.m. was the first eclipse of the full moon. There's going to be four of them. We'll have plenty of time to talk about that another time. But anyway, it's big, 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 big. So I'm going to do our weekly reading and I'm also going to choose two people. We got so many questions sent in and they're all so good. So I did put them in a hat. <laughs> really, I did. I actually have this big giant hat. I'll show you next week. Um, and I picked two of them. So I put them on this computer and then I'm going to do readings with my cards from the Wisdom of the Hidden Realms deck, which I have on my iPhone. So I can show you different ways of using the decks, iPhone apps or the cards themselves or on the, my computer. It'll be fun. So let's take the first question. Remember, I'm going to be doing the reading for everybody. So um, Dorote or Dora, Dorota asks, Dear Colette, will I be able to change my family patterns? I feel I've already started the work and yet still I become so overwhelmed so much that my physical body gets heavy. I'm not overweight. I'm actually a small size, but I just feel so heavy and then light. So it's been a roller coaster for me with love, Dorota. Okay. This is such a great conversation. First of all, I totally, I personally totally get it. Um, I go up and down and feel super heavy and then feel lighter according to my experience. Now I've read over 35,000 people in the past 24 years. So this is a common discussion that I have with people. When we talk about how we create reality and how we co-create reality, what is our experience bringing us? And when does the subconscious actually circumvent the hard work that we do? And it, it does take work because we're programmed. We're pre-programmed by repetition and reinforcement by what we learn from our family. So it's perfect. The family pattern that we notice, um, that those things come automatically. So I always say we have to learn to fire the automatic pilot, give them a new job. Um, but it does take practice. So don't expect that the family patterns are going to go away. They don't go away. You just become more and more conscious and aware of them. And then you consciously need to make a different choice. And that's what I believe the best answer is to this. But I'm also going to ask the language that I've created, which is the Oracle cards to help give a little bit more clarity on this as well. So this is for all of us. And, um, again, every one of us has the same, and we're all being invited to, it to evolve by looking at these family patterns. So here is, uh, the card that I picked for Dorota and all of us <laughs> and see how this is going to work. Here's a card from the wisdom of the hidden realms that I'm choosing for Dorota and that will help all of us understand this pattern a little bit more. So what do you need to do it will be the question. What do I need to know? What do I need to do to help change these patterns? So let's take a look. I'm going to ask spirit to guide me and we're going to pick the card and see what comes up. So the card I chose was the high Lord of gratitude and service. So it's an interesting uh, card to get because when we look at gratitude and service, we look at our attitude, the attitude of gratitude. So depending on your attitude to the family dynamic will actually help you make that change faster and recognize that these ups and downs are part of the part of the conversation period. So if you are grateful, for example, say, Oh, wow, here I am again. I get it. I'm, I'm in this pattern. I can learn some detachment and we teach this actually in the envision lab. We teach detachment and spatial distance where we say, I, I need to be distant from this radically accept it. Be grateful that you are conscious of it. And that will actually help the roller coaster even itself out a bit. It won't take it away altogether, but one day you will start noticing that you're not reacting the same way. So I believe it is the attitude of gratitude and the willingness to learn and being of service. What I love about the focus on changing family patterns is when we change those patterns, we no longer bring that energy into the world. We then serve the world in a different way. So, um, I hope this helped you and everybody. And we're going to choose another one now. This is so much fun. So here's another question that came in from honey bee. <laughs> That's so cute. So honey bee asks, um, Colette, thank you for taking the time to read this. I am most grateful. I've been building my business for over six years now, but I'm finding my enthusiasm waxing and waning. Another 
ebb and flow. Um, is there any insight that can help me feel more in tune with my true purpose for others? Am I on the right track with my business and what it serves to others? Now, this is a common question, almost verbatim, like 50% of the clients that I talk to weekly, we talk about this subject. What is right livelihood? How am I compensated for my time? Am I following my passion? What does that mean? Well, there is a uh, concept that I think is false and that we're always going to feel in tune all the time, but it isn't true. Um, just because we feel some days out of tune and other days in tune doesn't mean that we're off track. It means that we're evolving, we're changing, we're taking a look at ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis. Outer conditions may affect us in a way that may not be conducive to being happy, joyous, and free all the time. I think that we have to trust that there's an ebb and flow with our own personal energy, what's going on in the outer world at the same time. Um, so I'm going to say that you're, to be in tune for your true purpose for others, I think is really about praying every day. Let me be of service. I always like to say, um, make me a channel for divine clairvoyance. Let me be of service. Thy will be done through me. So I always acknowledge consciousness, a greater consciousness. When I forget, then I think, oh, am I in tune? Am I off tune? So I really do think that the answer here is to consciously act in service on behalf of whatever. And you'll be surprised too, by the way. I thought I was going to be doing something totally different. And the minute I, I kept praying, you know, thy will be done through me, show me how best to be of service, P.S. I want to be a singer. And it was like, yeah, you're going to have a microphone in your hand, call it but it's gonna be a little different. So that's the other thing is to surrender. Then you get the signs. You start to follow the signals and spirit tells us when we're off tune or out of tune, as long as we're willing to be aware and conscious. And that, my friends, is what everybody is being invited into right now. We are entering into the intuitive age. We must develop this. This is not something that is a question of should I or shouldn't I. The signs are everywhere. We're all being led this way right now. So let's ask the cards. Let's see what does spirit have to say through the language of wisdom of the hidden realms and see what else is here. So I'm going to, oh, this one wants to come. Select a card. I did. Ah, oh, this is interesting. So the chess queen is the card and the chess queen is all about trust and trusting in a higher strategy. Um, it does talk about human strategy and making decisions and thinking about things. But predominantly what this talks about is a strategy of spirit, that when we play the game of life with spirit, we are always going to win. So this kind of gives just yet again another take on the same subject. So I hope that was helpful. Now, let's do the universal energies for the week. So let's take a look at the forecast for the universal energies that are gonna affect all of us. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm predicting anything specifically for the individual, I'm not. I'm looking at this almost like the weather report for the week then each one of us individually has our own story to tell within that framework. But it's gonna be curious to see, so far when I've been testing this and when I did last week, it actually went in accordance and alignment with what the astrologers were saying. So, um, but I'm, I'm not planning this. I'm gonna ask Spirit to do this right now, live with us. So I'm going to ask Wisdom of the Hidden Realms to let us know what are the three, what is the kind of three main focuses that we all are all going to have to look at in this week of the blood moon. So let's take a look. And by the way, the blood moon does not mean anything spooky. All that meant was is that the earth is in the center of the sun and the moon. And when the moon is full, it looks kind of orange or red and it's absolutely beautiful. So um, there's some very interesting energies coming for this week. So, okay, so let's ask. So I'm gonna choose three cards from Wisdom of the Hidden Realms off my iPhone app. So we're gonna pick this one. Then I'm going to, oh, this one wants to come. Excellent. And I'm just going to ask, you know, what do you, what, what, what do you have to tell us? What do you have to tell us about all of this, about our evolving experience? Um, so I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to open up these, all three of them at the same time. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. It's almost the same as last week. <laughs> okay. And you, remember last week I went, I don't like these cards. I don't like them this week either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so 
with her, all three of the cards are reversed, by the way. So we got Sisters of the Seasons reversed, which is to remind all of us not to move forward so quickly. So if we think that, oh boy, oh boy, we're gonna get all our answers now, and everything is clear now, in fact, Spirit wants us to negotiate a little bit and wait it out and still make our plans and still take a look about balancing things. Um, you know, doing our personal inventory, for example, that's going to be really important, but we can't trick the seasons. So everything needs to have its own process and we have to surrender to that process. And that's what this card is. And it is reminding us not to get too pushy. Okay, so interesting. We'll see what that means to world affairs about not being too pushy. Um, so it is a warning, it says don't jump the gun is the warning. Now, the next card <laughs> is also all about staying still, just like last week. Um, we got the Ice Queen, now we got the Ice Queen reversed again. So it is really reminding us about non-action and really reminding us that we could actually um, make a difficult choice for ourselves by pushing things this particular week. So it's really, again, about staying still, being present, taking inventory, looking at our lives, deciding in the different quadrants of our life, for example, look at the four elements, right? Or the five elements, if you include spirit. So, you know, how is our emotional life? Where are we in our finances? It's tax week now, pretty much all around the world. So we're all looking at our money right now. So how do we engage ourselves there in the concrete world? What, how do we think? What do we think about? the subconscious program, that family concepts, the things that we repeat over and over again. We need to take a look at those repetitive patterns. And then also, you know, so we have, um, what makes us passionate? What are we, what are we doing? What is it that we're planning? How are we being creative? Where does our inspiration come from? What and who is our higher power? because what we think consistently and what we're passionate about becomes our higher power. So really it's a week yet again of consistently looking at ourselves and the end result, of course, this is all about evolution, right? So we're looking at how else do we see things transpire? So then we have um, the last card, which is also a challenger. Uh, um, so it's obviously gonna be a challenging week for everybody. Um, now, this is very interesting. So it's surrender to change. So I think part of this need to inventory ourselves and to take a look at where we're at and our, our responsibility and accountability for whatever is going on in our lives as well and not looking at ourselves as victims of the outside world or the conditions, even though collectively we are invited into evolve and to some discomfort is telling us this, right? Um, it makes sense too because Aries and Libra are at in opposition, so that's all that energy. For those of you who are into astrology, I'm gonna have an astrologer next week to talk to us. Um, anyway, so it really is talking about, you know, you we are being reborn right now. We are really required to let things go that aren't working. It is telling us, don't resist it. Do not resist what you have to let go of. And things will be opportunity laden, and a lot of really good stuff's gonna come out of this. It's just the, if you really wanna push forward, push, 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 is not gonna happen. Um, lay back a little bit, really adopt an attitude of gratitude, take a look at your life, um, the different quadrants of your life, connect to spirit, connect to spirit, and connect to spirit, and let nature take its course. You are nature, what you think about is what's going to come about, so think positive this week, regardless of the conditions. We'll get through this, and we'll get through this together. Mwah! Till next week. Bye. Traveling down the road, I didn't know that I was lost. I had tried too many shortcuts, and the cost left my heart broken. So I had it closed for repairs. Wandering in my desert, your oasis appears You're like a long, cool drink of water I'm thirsty, that's clear when I taste you I know you, I know